This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found Home Gadget Geek, show number 474, recorded on January 7, 2021. Here on Home Gadget Geeks, we cover all the favorite tech gadgets that find their way news reviews, product updates, and conversation, all for the average tech guy. I'm your host, Jim Carlson, broadcasting live from the Average Guy TV studios here in a pretty chilly, Mike, pretty chilly Bellevue, Nebraska. Winter has settled in. We got eight inches of snow right before, was that right before Christmas or after? Uh, before? I think, oh, man, that was so long. I think right after. I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, I was taking the trash out for post-Christmas. Yep. And it just dumped on us. Uh, here. It's still around, oh. though. Yeah, no, it is. off now, but still, still around. A little bit of rain today. It was kind of, kind of, I don't know. It's, it's been in a weird spot, but I liked it. I mean, it was great to have, I don't know, we got eight inches, maybe six, seven, eight inches, which was pretty nice, I think. And, uh, and of course, what is also nice is the show notes. We post the show notes out at the average guy dot TV at the beginning of the year, Mike. You know what we got to think about it every time at the beginning of the year? Yeah, you guessed it. A little Hello Fresh. <laughs> what, what do you think of that? You know, uh, I like the banner. Oh, uh, pretty sweet huh yeah it's yeah. always been there i just i was <laughs> never used it <laughs> during, during the break I, I was thinking like what could i do different in 2021 i'm like hey they got banners so we'll give some banners a try you know we uh i still have a bunch of coupon codes and all kinds of things for you guys to try out HelloFresh. it was just a great reminder this holiday season while I, we were doing all our christmas stuff um you know we do two meals a week there's four of us here right now sarah tim sam me and man, it is really nice to have two nights a week figured out, right? Just they're fig- you don't think about it. Just set the meat out to thaw, especially because I'm home all the time at noon. Set the meat out to thaw. Then uh, at five fifteen, like clockwork, I grab the bag, take it up, holler at Samantha. She comes out. We chop everything up, put it in, cook it. It's pretty delightful. Um, we'll get to this in a second. I got Sarah a, a, a big Christmas gift of a, of a wine fridge. So we'll talk about that here a little bit later. So, and we've been picking wines for him too. And that's super great. So if you want to give it a try, if you're just kind of tired of, and come on guys, so, some of you are really eating bad. I'm not saying you're going to lose weight doing this. Everybody else is trying to do it, but it's some really good food. The average guy.tv slash hello fresh. If you want to save 40 bucks, if you contact me directly, I can most of the time get you a code to try it for free. Might in the new year might be something to uh to try out and, and to get it done. Mike, did you guys do you have any new new year stuff that you're at home that you're trying uh, family wise or any new resolutions, so to speak? Uh no. Han, you know, Hannah and I aren't big on the resolutions. We <laughs> Mainly because we are we're so bad at resolutions. Like we just yeah. we came to terms with the fact that you know yeah. we should just start new things no matter when it is during the year. So uh, we've been trying to do things a little bit healthier lately. But we, we started that probably back in November, um, just kind of cleaning up some of our stuff. But no, like we we you know, my resolution is to not spend as much on technology this year. I, I was looking back at some of the expenses from last year. I'm like, whoo, I got into a lot of. Uh, of really new stuff I'm, I'm off to a bad start if it's been, <laughs> like i don't know if it's because i was i was bored i have to be careful because sarah's on the other side of the wall i don't know if it was because it i um i was it was the holidays i was home a lot i was bored i, I got involved in some projects and the pre-show we're talking a little bit about doing some of this hard hard drive mining crypto work and I was like, you know, I was pretty happy with what i had but this man this gave me some opportunities to try some new things and for whatever reason, I haven't been as tight about that as I have been in the past. And so we're going to, I'm going to show some of those things as we go. But so maybe a little less of it. You, you say that, but do you think you can do it? Well, so, so I set a rule of if I want, because so, what I learned about me, Jim, is it's not big ticket items that get me in trouble. It's all of the little sub $150 items that you just kind of order. Yes. Hard, hard drives, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So I just, and my problem is I just, I think about it. Like how many, there have been, this is bad, countless times I have been laying in bed trying to fall asleep. And I'm like, Ooh, wait, that would be cool. And I ordered off Amazon. And <laughs> so my rule is if I really want it, I'm going to wait 48 hours. Because I'm, you know me in like ADD with hobbies and ooh, I kind of want to start that hobby. So if I wait 48 hours and I still want it, 
uh, then think about it more. But I'm trying to wait, hold off on that button. And it's worked actually quite a bit. There's been a lot of stuff. Uh, I recently got into duck and goose hunting, and there's so much money you can spend on duck and goose hunting. Um, and so I've been waiting on things, and okay, that that was a lot better because two days from now, I didn't. I realized I didn't need that. It's just a want. So getting a little better on the spending front. You would, uh, my bro- You'd enjoy hanging out with my brother. He is the exact opposite of me. So he's an outdoors <laughs> guy. He's a hunter. You know, he's a he's a man's man, and uh, he's a duck hunter. And so he's got a Black Oak Farms down in Oklahoma that uh, he and his wife, Monica, uh, co-partner on. And they got kind of a whole hunting experience farm going on. So you can go down, stay at the farm. They feed you. You can hunt down there. It's pretty cool. Now That'd be great. You'd think the pandemic could slow him down. No. No. Probably picked up. People have time yeah. to kind of, and maybe they yeah. can even work remotely a little bit if they want to at night. Right, right. And it's they're, they're, it's not a condensed, packed, you know, you're talking about just a couple people at a time uh, doing the experience. So, um, well, okay. So you, you and I both uh, probably have, I did really good last year, but man, the holiday season, I've, I need to kind of tighten that up. Uh, one of the things, the uh, new thing I also want to do this year is on the live show, if you're watching the video, big thanks to our Patreon uh, supporters. Uh, if you support uh, the show and you support it at $5 or more, your name is now scrolling on the bottom. I just use first name because I didn't ask permission to use everybody's last name. Uh, but it's down there. It'll scroll for a little while. I want to thank you for doing that. Uh, there, There is really now just a $5 level. If you came in uh, a little lower, keep it if you want to. But Move up to the five dollar level. I'll also send you one of our Home Gadget Geeks coins, those little three um, uh, D printed coins um, that Ron printed for us. And I've got guys. I actually have some, and I've got some envelopes I bought just for him. And and I now that I know how much postage it costs, <laughs> I'd love to send you one. So if you want to join us at the five dollar level, jump in there. Uh, U.S. for those coins, it's a little harder to ship them international, but. Uh, thanks for doing that. Big thanks to our Patreon supporters, especially as we just think about, Mike, we finished up 10 years of this. And I think we've been doing 10 years. I mean, I think we've been doing Patreon for four of it, maybe four or five. I think. Wow. Has it been that long already? It's been around that long. I don't have to go back. Probably. To yeah. 17, maybe 16. So four or five years. I don't know. Uh, but but big thanks to all of you who uh, who listen every week who support us. You don't have to, but uh, we appreciate it when you do. And thanks for doing that. We will be planning a Patreon meetup of some kind coming up here. I was going to try and do that in early January. I just kind of lost track. So we'll be uh, watch your email feed um, for that as well. Mike, do you get any, um, you get any cool gadget gifts uh, for Christmas? Uh, let's kind of, let's start with that. Just kind of talking a little bit about Christmas gadget gifts. Any Santa bring anything? Uh, gadget gifts wise, uh, not a lot. I got my wife a rocket book and those are actually really cool. Oh, yeah. So if you yeah, haven't looked yeah. at them, they're, they're pretty simple. Uh, I've, I'm surprised how cheap these things are now. Now, so it's just one of those, you know, regular notepads, but this one's kind of cool because you can wash off the ink. So it's got like 30 pages. You use a wet rag and you can wipe it right off. Uh, but my wife liked that you can write with a regular pen on it. So it's, well, a regular style pen. It's a certain, I think it's the pilot friction pens is what you can use on them. Uh, and then you can scan those pages into your phone and organize them and send them to all your different cloud services. So got that for her. For me, uh, I got a new Western Digital 4 terabyte drive as a gift. Yeah. So here's the right. That's pretty much exact when I got her. And pretty cool. What I like about that rocket book too is, you know, there's, there's really not nothing too fancy about it. I'm glad they're the price they are because the app is really just a scanner app. I mean, you could use next cloud, one drive, you know, to scan those in. Uh, but on the bottom of each page, there's like these little check symbols. And depending on which one you check, when you scan it, it'll automatically either like each, you can program each one of those check symbols to do something. So email it to a certain email, upload it to a certain, you know, Google drive, iCloud, uh, next cloud, whatever you want. And so it was kind of cool. So at the end, when she's done with the meeting at the very bottom, she just check marks the things she wants. And and that's useful for her because she does a lot of meetings with her boss on, cause they do a lot of presentations together. And so she can just check mark one box and when she scans it, it'll automatically email those notes to her, to her boss, which is just kind of nice. Saves a step. Um, so, so she really likes that. And then the searchability is really nice in the Rocketbook app. 
uh, pretty cool. So for 24 bucks, not bad. And then uh, she, she also got um, AirPod Pros. So oh, she nice. was got her got her a set of those. She was, she's been wearing mine like all the time. And so I was like, you know what? It's time you have your own. And she loves cleaning the house with her AirPods and listening to her uh, Harry yeah, Potter right. audiobooks. Right That's kind of her thing. And then uh, a Western terabyte, four terabyte red, drive, red, black, blue, yep, with, red, yeah. red, red. And uh, I actually so it was interesting. I I didn't know what I needed. As far as I, w- I was looking to replace a failed drive. So when I put it on my Christmas list, I had been looking to replace a failed drive that was failing. Um, then it failed on me. So I actually needed to replace it before Christmas. So I had already ordered a replacement. Um, and actually, <laughs> it's a long convoluted way of saying that I ordered a replacement off Amazon so I could have the replacement right away. Because obviously my data was being, um, what's it called? The... Uh, Whatever unrate is when your when your data is not there, it was it was using the parity oh, disk uh, yeah. to say it was there. I can't remember what the emulated. Was a, it's emulated. Like emulated yeah, yeah, it was emulated. So I got that drive the next day from Amazon, replaced it, so it was all good. Then I sent the failed drive into Seagate. Um, this that has taken a long time. I just mm. got the notification that the RMA was shipped back to me, and I did that RMA back. I want to say beginning of December. So I know the holiday season was probably tough for them, but uh, it was a long replacement time for an RMA on a Seagate. They are replacing it because uh, it was it was only a year and a half old. So they're sending me a new one. But then I got this new one for Christmas because I'd obviously put that on my Christmas list. So I actually added a second parity drive to Unraid, which is oh. one of, something I had never really thought about doing. But now with two parity drives in Unraid, I can lose two discs and be totally fine. And I have a lot of old drives in my Unraid. Yeah. And a lot of drives that are the same age. So yeah. I'll, I was like, you know what? There's a very high likelihood that if one of my drive fails, again, mm-hmm. um, it, another one could at the very same time, especially because rebuilding puts a lot of stress on the other drives because it has to pull all that parity data from every single drive to rewrite. So you're reading a ton from all the drives. So now have a second parity disk in there, which allows me to have two drive fault tolerance on the Unraid box, which is which is kind of nice. It was a little like, okay, well, now what do I do? Because I didn't need an extra four terabytes of storage. I still have 11 terabytes free, which is more than enough for me. Uh, so yeah, adding in a second parity was, I think, a good option for that red drive. I've um I've been digging these. So this is an eBay. These are Hitachi or HG, um, HGST. These for four terabytes, um, they're, you know, and you can get them. Uh, sometimes they're new. Sometimes they're refurbs. Sometimes they're used, you know, types. But if you, you kind of watch this and like right now, four terabytes is the sweet spot. We're talking 60 bucks. You probably yeah. like there are a hundred or more if you're buying them new. They are. Like, yeah. Those reds. The, I think it was yeah. a red pro even. So that's like 120. I want to say for four terabytes. Yeah. Brand new from Amazon. Right. So that, that's pretty, that's pretty average price. Um, Walmart. I just showed 118 at Walmart. If you want to buy it there. Uh, here in the U.S., but these um, these drives, these seventy, they're seventy two hundred RPM, sixty four mega cache. They're enterprise class, is what they say, kind of heavy duty. They're kind of built. They're they were kind of built to be in data centers, mm-hmm. and of course, data centers are rolling all these things out, and so there's just a an abundance of these. And Mike, this is kind of where I've gone. Uh, it's a for, really good deal. A lot, a, a lot of what I'm doing. Um, the for the for the Drobo um, when I'm I've been replacing all the drives in the Drobo with four terabyte drives, I get the slower spinning ones. They call them Cool Spin uh, on this side, and they say so they're not as they're not as hot. You know, it sits inside that Drobo, and I, and I to be honest with you, I don't need speed in there. To to be honest, like the Drobo slows it down naturally. Right. I don't need seventy two hundred RPM drives in there doing it. Um, but this has been this has kind of been what my go to on on. Um, uh, eBay hash. And I, man, I've had really, 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 really good luck. We talked about, um, as far as getting great drives, one of the tools I've been using when I get a new, when I get a drive off eBay, I've been using uh crystal disc mark to the, or in crystal, crystal disc info to run it on there, right? It goes in and it shows you a whole bunch of things. What I've been looking at is the number of hours these drives have been spinning. And then, um, well, on one of the slow days during the holidays, I thought, you know, I'm going to build, I should probably do this. Hold on. Let me, let's see. Do I have this? Did you somewhere? build a spreadsheet to track this? I build, please. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So a spreadsheet model, every single model 
what they what their specs are. So their you know their speed, how much how much uh, cash they have on them. Then I did some ATTO testing on them to say, okay, what are they what what are what are we really seeing from a benchmarking perspective? And I took a few kind of benchmark speeds that were in there. Um, in, in but the the thing I started looking at is the number of hours. Like, you know, when you're buying new, you know, it's gonna have zero or one or something on there. But like some of my drives, I have an eighty four thousand hour drive. <laughs> like, I one I've had it for a long time. Two, they just run all the time, right? In my in my environment, they're running all the time. We mentioned in a pre show, but on on eBay, I also bought a Drobo deal, and it came with four two terabyte drives. And um, you know, two hundred dollar deal with the Drobo. I'm going to sell the Drobo, and hopefully make that back. If I don't, it's still a great deal. Mike, uh, one of the things I tested, so I put all the all these in and ran uh, the disk info on them, just to see what kind of hours were on them. Uh, the most the most one had was thirteen hundred, and now these were drives that were they're they're two thousand thirteen drives, so they're seven years old and they got fourteen hundred hours. I've my average drive speed, not that I calculated this on my spreadsheet that I put together, but my average is sixty four thousand yeah. on my drives, right? To to be able to pick up drives like I just got lucky again, but maybe twenty twenty one is going to be my year of luck. Like maybe everything's going to be lucky, good Drobo deals, good Bitcoin deals. But I think, Mike, that was one of those things as you think about your Unraid box and the drives you're putting them in, how how long have those things been on, right? You know, kind of knowing yeah. it's like changing the oil, right? It is. You know, Unraid spins them down when they're not in use. Since it's not typical Raid, it doesn't need those running all the time, which is nice. So I think when you use Unraid, your hours are probably less than normal. But even on on those drives that you were reading from, that's only I had to do the math, but fifty eight days of runtime, and those are probably in a data center where they're on all the time, right? Yeah. Not well, not okay. in something like Unraid. So this came from a these two terabytes came from an individual, and I I don't even know how you would have, like I have a feeling he bought them new, and they've been sitting in a Drobo that hasn't been turned on. Yeah. Like, that's, that or does Drobo spin the drives down when they're will, not being accessed? It will spin them down. So maybe so he just it, never maybe, was yeah. accessing the data. Yeah, but to get to get hard drives used that have less than fifteen hundred hours. Yeah, like I I kind of lucked out on that one. Now that being said, um, you know my other drives are you know they're in the forty sixty. I've got a few that are in eighty. They test fine. You know, they're still, they're still cranking along, but it's, it was kind of for me, you know, I, I've got so many of them now. It just was helpful to put a spreadsheet together to kind of start saying, okay, what is what, and where do I have it? And what am I using it for? Kind of data stored on it and how many hours are on it. And to your point, this is what really struck me is what you said is I could lose one of those drives. Am I like, do I need to be more careful about where I put it? Yeah. Kind of based on that. Right. Yeah. Well, and so I like your spreadsheet idea because I'm I'm the same way. I when I so when I went to go replace that drive that had failed, two things for me. Number one, I had totally forgotten about what drives I'd replaced and which ones I had over the years. I I thought for sure I had these two WD yellow enterprise drives from a long time ago. And they weren't in there. I'm like, oh, I must have needed to replace those at some point and didn't know. Like I have no idea what was even in my box. The second thing for me was I need to actually label. So I have that Rosewill massive, I think it's a 12 or 15 mm-hmm. bay server mm-hmm. case, but they're not hot swappable on the front. So to actually replace drives, you have to remove the lid of the server and pop out the drive trays. Well, I had I have never written which one is which and Unraid tells you which one's failing with the ID of it. So if I just put that ID on stickies, because I literally, it was the last drive I pulled. It's every time, Jim, when you go to pull something out, I pulled out 10 drives. It was the 11th drive that I pulled out. That was finally the one that had failed. And of course I have to deconnect and reconnect all those. So sometimes it is labeled for you, you know, depending on the drive, you can see, you know, there'll be a, There'll be a label. Not, this doesn't tell. You'd have to go in and see which disk it was. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, no, it, it says it. But I'm saying like I had to pull each drive out of yeah. the tray to see. If I just said, on, if I had labeled on the top of the server, hey, yeah, this right caddy on. has right this on. drive, this drive, this drive, in slots one, two, three, that's what I need to do. And, I, and you know, I told myself, well, when I replace this drive, I'm going to do that. I didn't. I was a rush. I just put the lid back on, closed it, and now I still don't know where all my drives are in there. 
So <laughs> now we, even so, color coded and everything, Jim, well, you don't go lightly on Excel sheets. No, when I started getting going, you know, what's in the Drobo and the, the new drives I just picked up are down below here and just, you know, some indication. It, it just, it was one of those, like, I, I, I kind of need to know. I just got stuff everywhere. And I, mm -hmm. I that's my MO. That's this. Is, I listen, I'm not normally a spreadsheet guy, <laughs> but this is, as, as I started working on this project, I just thought, you know, I should probably get a handle because in the in the chia project that 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 ken and i are working on kind of the better drives you want to put in a position that you're, you know when you're processing the plots that's mm -hmm. the most intensive part of the whole thing once the plots are done you just you can put them on any it doesn't matter as long as they can get to them <laughs> what what drives they go on to so it got me thinking okay what are my fast drives and then what are my not so fast drives and i kind of need to prioritize if i'm throwing crappy drives at the plotting then the plotting goes slower and right. that day over day over day over day, that can make a big difference. If I can get it from 18 hours to 12 hours. Okay. Well that day over day, that's significant, right? I can start really beginning to, and it's power consumption. So if I can get it done faster, it's less power than I'm using and those drives are better. So it's just one of those moments. Yeah, I've been doing this for about two months, but, but mm, no, oh, I don't know. I guess it was early in the week, early this week. Yeah, maybe Monday or Tuesday in the evening. I was like, you know, I'm going to put this spreadsheet together. And so maybe just a good idea if you've got a lot of drives or you're working on that, just get an inventory, sit down. That, um, you know, uh, the, the crystal disk info um, uh, gets that super easy for you. Just start it. It finds all your drives and then it gets all that information. There's, by the way, there's other plenty of other ways to get that done. But um, that was, uh, that was super helpful to me and kind of fun, super nerdy. Uh, but, uh, but I like you, Mike, uh, that's like, you know, I got another drive for the Drobo coming tomorrow. That's going to go in and give it more space. And, you know, so I've been planning, but let's, let me be really clear. It has been super fun. Like, I think the most fun I've had with my stuff in the last five years has been over the last three months of doing this kind of stuff. So yeah, no, no regrets there. I, I, it's, it's, it's super fun. And um, one of the things that, um, well, and we're not going to talk about this in depth, but, but I will mention one of the things I got that I put on my list that showed up was a meter plus. And we've been talking about these, you know, this is a, a thermostat or a, a um, what do we call these things? They are a temperature thermometer. Pro thermometer thank you. <laughs> totally i was like what what do we call these things they're a thermometer the meter plus has a sensor in the top and in the bottom so it does mm -hmm. ambient temperature on the outside it does meat temperature on the inside uh wi-fi enabled uh you can use your bluetooth to extend it it's <laughs> dude it's super cool now i have yet to jam this in a in you know in a chicken yet so i got some work to do but i'm uh, really excited i had been using uh the iDevices eye grill and by, by the way, which I still really like, Bluetooth enabled, so a little more difficult. You get too far away from it and you lose connection. And, you know, one of the things I like about the the meter, the meter plus, is you can hop connections in there. So if you've got it, mm -hmm. it's it's Bluetooth. If you can go to a Bluetooth that has Wi-Fi, it'll hop and you'll get even a farther distance. So you can get, you can read this thing a little bit farther away. And so the base station is the very first part, right? So you have the meter in there. Then this goes to your phone, and then the phone can go to Wi-Fi. And there's just tons of stuff that you can do to extend the range. This was the hard, this was always bad about this. It's only like a 30-foot range. And then I'd come down to the basement and be like, yeah, I don't know. And I'm like, well, I don't, I want to be down here. Yeah. When it's cooking out there, right? So, so my trick with that is, so you put the meter in the meat. You mm -hmm. stick that base on the grill so it's right next to it because that the the probe to that is really the short distance. Yeah. Then I I have a tablet that's just always on in the right. in the house. That is what's receiving the Bluetooth, mm -hmm. and since that's connected to Wi-Fi, you can be anywhere in the world because yeah. that's connected to the internet at that point. So the tablet to me then I because I have my phone on me, so I constantly walk out of Bluetooth range from that sensor. But if it's on a tablet that's just constantly close enough to it in the house, um, so that's what I do. I, I run the cook on the tablet because I know the tablet's not going to move. But I'm going to yeah. be walking around the house. I'm going to leave with my phone, and I don't want to lose connection. So that's why I really like having that extra little tablet there 
Um, and then I monitor it from work. So I'll do a smoke, do that. And now, Jim, you can go to work and you've got your phone on you. And as long as you started it on the tablet at home, you're good to go. Yeah. I wonder, I don't know if they have an Android app. Are they iOS only? No, uh, I don't know. I, the tablet I run is an iPad, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I think they do. I think they do. Uh, the, I assume so. The, the base is just an incredible craftsmanship on the base, right? It just, little magnet uh, pops on the back, batteries in there. It's just beautiful. So um, that was by far favorite gift. Now, don't get me wrong. I got some Baileys and I got some old Forester bourbon and I got some, um, uh, the kids got me some Jefferson's a bourbon barrel uh, cast, cask strength bourbon. Mm -hmm. Okay, those were good too. Don't get me wrong. I bet those were super good, but uh, uh, super fun to get the to get the meter. So you'll hear more about that coming up. But definitely, uh, definitely one of my favorite gadgets. It's amazing, uh, kind of coming out of that. One gadget, Mike, that got me a lot of work uh, to do. <laughs> so, like, I, I did not anticipate this uh, happening at all. Let me let me shop sharing here, and let me bring this up here is um i thought it'd be a great idea to get sarah a wine fridge like you know um uh you know electronically controlled you can set the temperature on what you want we don't you know we don't drink that much so 18 bottles was good just a great opportunity to to get in there and uh and try something new so uh ordered it and i was a, a little um you know, at first I was kind of like, ah, you know, I had ordered a generator from Lowe's and they broke it twice <laughs> delivering it. Like UPS is not good at heavy things. No, it's not. They just, they're not. So um, I was thinking, ah, I hope this thing is glass. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so uh, it came and I was going to open it the morning it came. I was going to open it and just inspect it. But Sarah was it came on a Saturday. She was up. I had to get it wrapped. So like I, I didn't want her to see this thing. So I quick wrapped it. And so I, we we opened it on Christmas morning is a miracle. It was it was actually it was perfect. Right. So I'm like, she's like, where are we, we going to put this? I was like, well, it's really kind of your choice. And she's like, what well, kind of like it in the kitchen? And I said, oh, it could it could go like right here in the kitchen, except there's no power right there. So I was like, OK, well, I uh, started looking around. Oh, I lucked out again. There's power on the other side of the wall. I could just go. I could, you know, I could punch in the wall, <laughs> run tap, a wire, in. tap it in. Come yeah. in. Okay, that's cool. And then while I was thinking, okay, well, you know, while I'm in there, we've got this. It's sitting right next to this base cabinet. There's no power up there. I'll just run in line down and in there, right? Cut another hole, put power in that. That was kind of the easy stuff. Then we thought, you know, this looks kind of silly over here without anything around it. We should put some new cabinets in. <laughs> so <laughs> this was a give a mouse a cookie type of project, dude, huh? Dude, it got it got totally out of hand. So so I the night before the snowstorm, I went I ordered on uh from uh, Home Depot uh three new cabinets. So two uppers and a big pantry cabinet. And I was like, well, it's going to snow the next day. I better go get these. Well, Home Depot had them ready. In like, well, now minutes. I need a snowblower to snowblow my drive. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, now, <laughs> so I go out, almost, almost. So I go out and pick out the, uh, the, the, the counters we, in uh, the, the cabinets and Tim helps me put them in, in the house. And then a couple days later, I spent a full day putting them in. And then you're like, well, we need some under, under cabinet <laughs> lighting. Right. So I start, like, it seriously is a project that just one thing, I still have to put the uh, trim down on this thing, but, but we are mostly done. But is the wine uh, fridge even in there now? It is. Uh, okay. You know, one, one of the things, yeah, let me, um, one of the cool things that, that came out of it, let's see, let me go back to Amazon and we'll go to orders. I shouldn't show this publicly because it's really kind of sick. Um, uh, how, how much stuff I've been buying lately, but so, um. In the frit, in that area, I didn't want it on the floor. I kind of wanted to elevate it on a stand. And so, we we I saw this stand it uh, it on Amazon seventy bucks sixty five let's say sixty five ninety nine, and it was the perfect size for both the fridge and a little container. You know, we put glass, we put our wine glasses and you know bottles and stuff in like a container. Yeah, and that container 
perfectly fit. Again, I just, I've been, it's been like, See, yeah, there's a little liquor corner. I mean, it's got yeah. wine. Well, and... No. So when I put the cabinets in, she moved, we have like a, yeah, we have kind of like a bar station now. In the yeah. Kitchen. Super great. Empty bottles go in here. It slides in, they're covered. It's, it's pretty great. And so um, that, that is in between. We have a cabinet that's in the middle, a big pantry. And then, and then um, uh, upper cabinets across the top. I was really surprised I got those in. But after you're done installing the cabinets, I know this has never happened to you, but after you're done installing cabinets, I looked at the other cabinets and I'm like, oh, those cabinets are crooked. <laughs> like those need to go. <laughs> those are crooked. Now, no, no replacement on them. But I did spend an afternoon completely like taking the screws out, jacking them around so they would get square and plumb and the guy who'd put them in before me, they weren't quite just exactly even. There were some spots underneath where you could feel the two cabinets, you know. I'm jack I mean, they're jacking up cabinets to get them fixed and stuff. In the end, it's a beautiful, it's a it was a beautiful fix. But it was one of those things where, you know, one gadget. Right. Led to, well, uh, you know, this. this how, so how long from start to finish was this project? So from the sure. time you. Sure. Uh, All the things I bought. <laughs> <laughs> from the time you got the wine fridge out and put it there and realized you needed to punch a hole for power to the time it's all done. Was this a week? It's a week. Okay. Yeah. It's probably a week and not working on it. Like I'd work on it in the afternoons. Right. Type deal. So. Um, but just kind of a, you know, I was actually surprised. I, usually I don't, I don't do well with those kinds of things. That just has not been my forte. Right. One of the things I learned is if I just slow down, if I'm, cause I'm always in a hurry to get it done. And when you're in a hurry to do those kinds of things, you always screw it up. And with these, I, um, I watched a bunch of YouTube videos to start with. I'm like, okay, how should I install these cabinets? So I watched a whole bunch of different ways of people doing it. And I picked what I liked and then I just did it. And, you know, I was countersinking the the screws. You know, you have to put a screw between two cabinets that come together. So I was drilling those out and countersinking them and then putting the screws in. It looked just super nice. I could, you know, I could put a piece, a little piece of wood in there if I wanted to. I'm not gonna, because that's just too, that's over the top. But um, yeah, I just took my time with it, you know, and it, it, it turned out, uh, it turned out pretty nice. I think one of the other things then that, in all of that, I've been trying to get out on the deck still, but it's been cold. So we've been trying different gadgets to get that done as well. And Mike, this may be something you think about a little bit for your deck is just a single, this is just a 15,000 BTU heater that sits on top of a, of a regular, um, you know, propane. I think tank. I was the one who told you about these. Were, were you? Okay, good. During, during a show. Oh, I good. think so. Okay. Okay, yeah. Because I remember I bringing this up to someone recently. I bought them. Does it work? They're great. Okay, yeah. good. They I'm glad they actually they, work. Yeah, no, they are really, really, really good. So I... um, I And do you have the up. single version like this? Because I've I seen do. some where there's duels. Yeah, they do have duels, Um, uh, the two. I, I thought I want to try a single first and just see uh, see what kind of heat that thing puts out. And uh, actually put it outside the... Um, uh, I was enjoying a candle with Ed Sullivan, uh, in, in my, in my shed. The that other took day. me a second. <laughs> if, you're, if you're new to the show, that's the, that's the code word. word. Use, that's the code word we use. So we don't get booted off YouTube, uh, for cigars. And, um, I'm really not that worried about it. And, um, so I just put it outside the door and then, and then, uh, uh, kind of pushed that in towards me. And it was really, really nice. About 30, it's like 33, 34 degrees outside, and it was keeping the shed warm enough. I did, I am buying a CO2 uh, detector to put in the shed just to make sure I'm not <laughs> killing myself. And right. not, I'm not closing it up and those kinds of things. But yeah, so Mike, if this was your recommendation, really, really good recommendation. And one that you can, like, if you're outside, you can get that thing, you know, kind of closer to you. And it kind of kind of warms you up nicely. So, yeah, this was my plan for actually for uh, the uh, the goose blind. So I'm going goose hunting next week, and I was like, oh, what should I do? And they make the little tiny ones that run off the tiny bottles. Uh, but number one, those are expensive, and number two, those tiny bottles don't last very long. I think this you kind of reminded me. I kind of forgot about these because when we had talked about it a while ago, I might grab one of those because for a, a duck blind outside, it'd be perfect. 
So um, just got to make sure you don't shoot the propane tank, but uh, no. <laughs> probably wouldn't be the yeah. That good. Yeah, it's got a safety mechanism in there. You need to make sure you take a lighter with you because that's how you, you it doesn't have a self lighter. Um oh that one doesn't. No, no, okay. It's got a they do hole. make models that do. It has a little yeah. red light like little, you know, those little ones that you like are on the grill. Yeah. That one looks like it does on the side, the little red button. No, no, that's no? the primer. So you push that and then see that let's see this little hole right here. Yeah. You, you push one of those lighters or a match through there and it, got it, it. light it lights the it lights the tank. Okay. $45, by the way, use Honey or one of those kinds of coupon sites. Oh, yeah, because Harbor Freight always has a ton uh -huh. of coupons. Yeah, yeah. And so I got, it, it covered my uh, shipping and tax, the coupon. And Basically. I know we've talked about it, but while we're talking about it, give me one second. Yeah, 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 yeah. As Mike is getting something from the back, from the back deck. Let's get rid of this. Okay, so while we're talking about Harbor Freight, I just want to bring these up again because they don't get enough credit. If you need a hard-sided case mm. to put, like, electronics in, this is from Harbor Freight, and it's the Apache. So this is the 3800 I have. So this is what I take my ham radio in when I do out in the field, and it is awesome for the price. I want to say, man, we should look it up. I think it's like it was like $40 right around there. It's got the pick foam on the inside so you pick it exactly to the shape of what you're doing so this is exactly fits your ham radio so or whatever you want to do so that fits my ham radio um nice and snug on both sides supposed to be water resistant now i haven't tested that aspect i know some people have and they said it's fine um little knob you turn there and it makes it water resistant this is one of my favorite harbor freight purchases i've ever made uh just because it is so much cheaper than like pelican now i'm not saying it's the same quality as pelican but a lot of us don't need the quality of pelican um you know i don't i don't know if i'd trust this thing on to put it onto a plane uh like in the bottom checked luggage like you do with pelican stuff i might um, but especially for just throwing stuff in your car, I think of a lot of like hunters who are now taking cameras out in the field to record their hunts. Perfect for that. Uh, love those. Uh, if you don't have a local Harbor freight in your area, they'll ship to you here, at least here in the United States. And I do, but it did, they didn't have any of those, um, heaters locally. No surprise. It's hunting season. It's being outside season. Yeah. Right. Um, so uh, they shipped one, came fast, and uh, and like I said, it was forty five bucks. So, not a bad way to stay warm. I ordered the CO two battery operated CO two because I want it to I want it sitting in the shed while I'm out there, and then while it's running, I just again I just want to make sure I don't <laughs> asphyxiate myself <laughs> while I'm out there or are using that thing because we're it's it is an enclosed area, and there is warnings about not using it in an enclosed area. So I'm like, well, okay. Let me just make sure I was, when I was spending time with Ed, he's like, you know, you should probably just make sure you're not doing that. So uh, we'll be, we'll be putting that in um, here. This, I think it'll come on Saturday, that CO2. Um, Mike, back to, I want to talk a little bit now about Home Assistant. And that, yeah. that had been a very, very popular program. We're going to spend, you, you got a bunch of stuff coming in. Um, I've been dabbling, you know, Home Assistant really took me back to Unraid. If there was anything like, I was using Unraid, but I really had no reason to use it, except, no, I didn't have a reason to use it. LandCache was the was a great application, but that by itself wasn't enough. And then we got into Home Assistant. It's like, this is super cool. As I've been buying more drives, I've been dropping down my, kind of the lower drives that I have. The older ones have been going to Unraid. You just, you mentioned that just a second mm -hmm. ago. Like, I'm kind of using some shoddy drives. Well, the, I have a, um, I have a, a Fujitsu uh, Synergy, Synergy, Synergy box that I've had for a long time. Core i3-540. It's an old box. Good power. Works perfect for Unraid. But getting in and out of that box has been kind of a nightmare. So I tried to get IC Doc to send me one of these to review, and they wouldn't. So I ended up buying it. So screw you, IC Doc. <laughs> but um, I did pick up one of their, uh, the, the for three and a half inch drives, it's three bays in a two bay slot. Uh, that the box that I have is a two five and a half inch base slot. So it'll be perfect for that. Um, I really expected the doors to be on the, on the very front, but they're kind of in a ways. And so the drives mm -hmm. stick out a little bit when you put it on there. 
I'm kind of used to there being a cover on it. Um, I think this was 45, so not terribly expensive. These things run 90 to 150, depending upon which one that you buy. But um, it's got a little fan control on the front, uh, this side maybe, over here. A little fan control on the front, controls the fan in the back. You can th see three SATA ports on this side, two power on that. Pretty standard for IC Dock if you're, if you're doing those. Hot swappable, so you can pull those drives. That was Mike. Really, what I wanted it was I want. I didn't want to have to yeah. bust into that box like I have to do. Yeah, it's yeah. a pain in the butt. <laughs> yeah. So I, I want to leave the uh, so the OS is running off of the flash drive, mm -hmm. right? So I have to mess with that. Yep. I have an SSD cache that's inside an IC dock container that's sitting in a in a in a slot. I want a parity drive that I don't want to move around a lot, but yeah, I, I want. Then I'm going to put the data drives in here, so I have I have easy Perfect. access to them. Yeah, kind of going forward. So that'll be that's kind of my over the next week or two. That's kind of the work I'm. I'll be bringing some of those drives down, pulling some of the old drives because I have some really crappy laptop drives in there now. Most of them are failing their smart health. You know, I'm getting the yep. thumbs down in the in the uh, in the dashboard for them. You picked up some new gear, though. What'd you get for your home assistant stuff? I did. And this was something you guys might remember. We talked about this a while ago. I was trying to look back at when I ordered this, but I ordered, I talked to you guys about the really cheap Zigbee USB hub and motion sensors that I ordered from AliExpress. So I ordered those, man, beginning of December, I think. And they just came this last week. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's AliExpress, right? You got to wait a month. But uh, for a typical... For the same USB hub on Amazon's forty dollars, I got it for four dollars off AliExpress. Um, you know, and this stuff isn't internet connected. Now I know there's all ways that could be Chinese crap, but I don't think I don't think these are. I'll say I think I think they're pretty good. Um, but for four dollars, I got the USB stick and stuck that on the Unraid box, passed it through to the VM of Home Assistant. So that gives you now you have access. So that USB stick has a Zigbee radio on it. So that is what you need to use Zigbee devices with Home Assistant. You can plug that thing into a Raspberry Pi, whatever you want to do. Um, so I, I plugged that in and I also ordered, uh, I have a third one on the way, Aquara, A-Q-A-R-A, -A, Aquara. Um, and they are motion sensors. So Aquara makes a lot of Zigbee devices. And Jim, I actually thought of you because I'm like, oh man, if Jim gets the $4 stick, they also have the little humidity temperature monitor. Throw that in your humid humidor for your cigars and you could plug that into Home Assistant. Use my candles for my candles. Or sorry, yeah, for your candles, your candle holder. Um, <laughs> and make sure the humidity is not melting your candles. Um, and, and you could get, exactly. plug that into Home Assistant. Yeah. And man, even more so, if you got like some sort of humidifier that could activate when the humidity got below i mean all sorts of possibilities there i like it but uh but anyway so got it up and working i tell you this is the cheapest best way and it adds so much functionality that i didn't know i needed into home assistant but let me give you an example of why it especially solved an issue for me um so these right here these have been my favorite thing in the world. What are they? These are the TP-Link Casa smart switches. So this is, you replace your wall switch with one of these. Now I know, Jim, this doesn't work for you or anyone who doesn't have a common wire. Um, but if you have a home that has a common wire, I have gone crazy with these things. These are now all over the house. And essentially think of it as, it, now your light switch has um, smart capability. So you'll be able to turn on, turn off from your phone, from a lady, from home assistant, and I, all of a sudden, Jim, ended up, I have so many extra hue bulbs now because I had had hue bulbs in my ceiling or in lamps that were controlled by switch manual switches. And that's how I was getting smart. I even had them up in light fixtures. And now that I've put this on the wall, you know, there were some of my places where the fixture had three hues in it. And now I can replace those with just the cheap LEDs. I pulled the hues out and because now it's all just controlled via the switch. Um, so, so I've gone crazy with these. So these are great when you are pushing an action to them. So saying turn on, turn off, it happens instantaneously. Um, what isn't instantaneous with these is pulling their state. So if you tap this on the wall, 
it takes the polling rate in Home Assistant. I don't know what it is for everything else. It might, you know, if you're using similar system. For Home Assistant, the poll is 30 seconds. So you don't know, and it pulls every 30 seconds. So it could be a maximum of 30 seconds before Home Assistant knows that this has changed. Now, like I said, pushing an action to it, if I say turn on, it turns on automatically. But knowing if you've changed it on the wall via the switch itself, it won't know for up to 30 seconds. Well, the way I had this set up, Jim, was you guys know my basement is unfinished. And all of my lights down here are, you know, a few of them are on a switch. A few of them were pull strings. So I wanted the ability to, when I walk down the stairs, we have a, um, what do they call it? A three pole switch where you can turn it on, on and off in two three locations. Way. Yeah, yeah three, three way, way switch. Three way. So I have one of those on my stairs. And what I wanted to do was when I flip the switch at the top of the stairs for it to via home assistant, via one of these switches, turn on all the lights in the basement. Well, we figured out that 30 seconds was just too long. You would turn it on, you'd walk downstairs, and you'd be walking around in the dark for another 15, 20 seconds before they would turn on. Um, so, I mean, it worked. And for turning off, it's fine because when you leave the basement, you walk up the stairs, you hit it, and you don't care if it's another 30 seconds before they turn off as long as they turn off, but it's the turning on. So I added one of these little Aquara motion sensors. And the motion sensors, by the way, were $13 from AliExpress. Go ahead and get those from Amazon, though, because they're only like 16 to 19 dollars so yeah you're gonna pay three five dollars more but you don't have to wait a month for them um so the akara ones are on amazon but i would just get the the usb hub if you can wait a month get the the hub for four bucks compared to forty dollars on amazon um but the motion sensor teamed right up and it is instantaneous so i put it right by the stairs so as soon as you start to walk down the stairs all the lights in the basement turn on and the other place i put this that was really nice so i started to think in terms of okay I, it drives me nuts seeing lights on around the house. Like I am a true dad now because I get so upset when lights are left on. Um, but it's, it's no one's fault, right? I am guilty of leaving the lights on all the time. So I'm starting to see, okay, in what areas could I have lights turn on and then turn off when motion is not even sensed anymore? Because these sensors, you know, they sense occupancy and while there's movement, while there's movement, and then when there's not movement, um, that can also be a trigger. So our laundry room was the other place I put one of these. So again, I put one of these switches in the laundry room for our overhead light. And as soon as you walk into the laundry room, it turns on, you're doing your work, doing your work. And the laundry room is a perfect place for this because there's no time where you're sitting in the laundry room, not doing anything. And the light's going to turn off on you and you need to like do that awkward, like, Hey, I'm still in here. Like some of our offices do at work. Um, so you walk in, it senses you turns on. And then as soon as it senses no motion anymore, it turns it back off. So our, now our, our laundry room light can just turn on and off. So, you know, one of these switches, which these Kaza switches, you can get on a really good deal sometimes on Amazon. I think I got the lowest I got them for was like 14 bucks mm -hmm. per switch. So not bad. Mm -hmm. uh, so 14 bucks, motion center, 14 bucks. So if you think about it for, you know, $30 a room, you can have motion with your light if you have an overhead light, which, which isn't too bad. I mean, now I think of this in energy cost savings. That's going to take a long time with LED lights. Oh, so yeah. it's probably not saving me much money in terms of that, but it's just kind of convenient not having your lights, not having to do that. And especially in a laundry room, you're obviously, you're walking in a long time with a basket full of laundry just to have that yeah. light turn on. Basement for me was just one of those convenience things. Um, so those motion sensors are good. The next place I'm going to put the third one is our son wakes up a lot in the middle of the night and runs into our room and it's all dark throughout the house. And he doesn't know kind of, he's, he's kind of scared in the middle of the night and he runs through. So I'm going to put one right outside his room. That'll just turn the, the hallway lights on just like a little bit. Cause now with all those hue lights, I was able to put them in places that I didn't have them before. So right. our hallway now has all hues. Um, so those can just turn on just a little bit, just to give him enough light. So he's not, you know, bumping into things in the middle of the night. Um, and then the final one will be in our kitchen and, you know, all these are conditioned based. So, uh, in the middle of the night, I'm going to maybe have it start at 10 PM till 5 PM. If we walk into the kitchen at night, uh, just turn the lights on just a little bit, just enough to let us, you know, get that midnight snack and, and then turn it back off when you walk out. So nothing life changing, but just little tweaks that make life like, ah, that's, That's kind of nice. cool. Like, I it like that. Nice. I love the the ability to kind of say, hey, if it comes on during this time, bring it up. It, now the light has to be able to support this, but bring it up to this level. But if it's during this time, bring it up to this level. Yep. And so you get some, right, you get some of those kind of conditional formatting things on them to say, yeah. hey, put this here, put that there. You know, we've got a couple lights that as soon as it gets dark, they come on over the cat litter box. Like we want the cats to have light the front door. Sarah loves having a light. We have a, 
our front door has a big piece of glass, you know, a big piece of like stained glass in the front of it. She likes to light that up. So you, you want to turn on the light on the inside, not the outside, but on the inside where we put Govi sensor lights on the outside. She always has. And so I just have those come on, you know, at dusk, they come on at dawn, they go off and they're just on all the time. It's an LED light. So like, I'm, I'm, I'm totally okay with that. You know, one of the things, you know, I tried to install those switches and didn't have very good luck. But uh, so one of the ways I'm going to get around that is I purchased the, you know, the, the, uh, not uh, Casa, I guess it's Casa, right? This is a Casa switch. Um, And I, I bought, you know, when I bought those Amazon um, Echo Flexes. Oh, yeah. The Flexes, you know, you can get those add-on components to it. And one of the add-ons is a motion sensor. So I, I had the motion sensor light. I was going to use it for something else and it ended up not working for it. So I'm going to put that in the garage and uh, put this down at the end. And I just purchased a little $11 LED light that'll go up on the ceiling. And when it senses most motion in the garage, it'll come on. And then, you know, the garage isn't one of those places where you want to leave only motion sensing on because you've been working on something and then it doesn't sense motion and the lights go off when you're in there. Yep. So in the garage, you don't want just motion. You want motion plus is kind of what I'm going to call it. The ability to turn a light on, and leave it on. So what's the situation? We're coming out the door. Okay. The motion sensor is right there. It needs to turn a light on so someone can see for the time that they're in there. Yet we have a main garage light. I bought one of those ones that kind of looks like a spaceship, you mm-hmm. know, you can, right? Well, that's on a switch. That one I do want. I'm not going to, I uh, initially I was going to put that on, you know, uh, a, a, a smart device, but I'm kind of like, nope. Actually, I want that one hired or hardwired. If we're going to be in the garage, turn the switch on. When you leave, turn it off. That That's right. kind of the manual. Otherwise, the motion will cover this and I can also control that that one light with the, you know, the assistance. If yep. I, wanted. I can create. So I'm actually kind of doing two lights in the garage that way. One that's like, Hey, no, I'm going to be working in here and I want this thing to stay on and I don't want it to be connected. And one is I need enough light. So I don't trip on. The, I just need to walk out there, get something, come right back in. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It took me a long time to figure that out. Like I was, you know, what do I want to do and how do I want to do this? And so I had an extra plug ordered an eleven dollar LED light from from Amazon and uh and took the flex out there. And so now we that's, that's smart work. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that that's a great setup. And I agree with you on the motion thing. You don't want to be sitting out there. That's where I started to play in home assistant. You can have um conditions where you can set a qualifier of time. So hey, if it's gone to no motion for five minutes because I'm likely not to sit perfectly still for five minutes. Right. Or whatever you want to set that time frame for. So not like, Hey, there's no motion anymore. Turn it off. It's like, Hey, no, there's no motion. And that stays in that state for X period of time. I'm probably not there anymore. Turn the lights off. Um, you know, in the living room or in the laundry room, I actually don't care too much. Even if you're in there being still, maybe you're folding something. It's not sensing you. Um, it's going to, it does turn off right back away, but then it'll turn right back on if you just move. So, so not in our, in our laundry room is pretty small, so you can trigger pretty easily, but I, I just like all that connectivity. And, and Joe asked in the chat, the polling rate for Zigbee, for me, it's been instantaneous. So I think the problem with Casa is it can push right away, but for polling, it's pulling from the cloud. I'm pretty sure from the cloud state of the device, uh, or it's just the way the integration is written for, the uh, for home assistant, that's probably actually more likely. And so I think maybe it can't, you know, pull from the API more than every 30 seconds or else it gets locked out. So that that's the only issue. But Zigbee's all local. That's the thing I really love about Zigbee, Jim, is there's no cloud component to all this. There's nothing. It's like a hub and a device and they pair directly and that was it. There's no internet. It's not Wi-Fi. It's just Zigbee. And it could not have been easier to get set up in home assistant. There's, I think, two... Um, I will tell you guys, if you go my route and you do the hub from AliExpress or really any hub, and then you do the Aquara stuff, don't just do the, there is a Zigbee integration Uh, that may work for you depending on which stick you get. It didn't work for me. There's a better way to kind of do it with two different um, add-ons from the add-on store. So again, this would be another reason why you would need the VM version 
right? If I was running this knock, you don't get the add on store. Uh, but you get the, you have to add a repository and get Zigbee to MQTT and then an MQTT broker and just run those two. It sounds a lot more complicated than it is. It's super simple. You just plug those two in uh, and it gets to work. But man, I've just been like, those little things are just huge. I am so used to now just when I pull up to my house, the garage door just magically opens. Like that has still been my favorite automation. Cause even when Hannah's in the car with me, she's like, Oh, that is kind of cool. Cause like I'll get in her car, we drive and we pull up and it just opens. And uh, it's, it, I love it. it. All those little things just kind of add up to have a really cool experience. They do. They do. When they don't work, they're kind of maddening though. Oh, they were. Well, yeah, because the uh, the MyQ garage door, MyQ is trying to lock down their API. And so there's actually a little backdoor trickery now because they they remove, they keep removing the access and then home assistant cool people keep finding a way around it. Um, <laughs> so it disconnected for a while. I was like, no, well, that's like literally one of my favorite features. So, yeah. but instantly in the Discord, home assistant has their own Discord. All the guys were just like, hey, try this. This is what we're doing. And they just found a way to, hey, add this line to your code and you're back up and running. A uh, really cool community over there on Home Assistant. Do you have a security camera in your garage? Uh, I do. Brian, Brian says he recently bought a Wise Cam 3 for my garage. Good for security. But also to double check that I closed the door after leaving. That is the number one reason I pull up that camera. Yes. Yeah. One of my cameras is literally just to see if I would close the garage door. I have a Zmoto pivot out in the garage so it'll move around. It's really an overkill for what I do in the garage too, but... It is one of those gives me notifications during the day. If like, I'm more worried about I left the garage door open and someone someone's in the garage. Like yeah. that's what I'm worried about. So, um, so I have that out there. It works pretty well. It doesn't integrate with anything. Zmoto has chosen not to be a good partner a lot of times with a lot of that stuff. So, um, so and it's primarily their older stuff. I don't know about their newer stuff if it does or not. But that has worked out, uh, pretty well to have that in there. To you can I can just jump in the app kind of say like you said like did i yep. <laughs> did I close that before i left you know before i left so. and that's another way with home assistant so ours actually i have it set now if the garage door is open for more than 10 minutes it lets us know it sends us a push notification to hannah's phone and my phone saying hey the garage door's been open for 10 minutes a good little reminder and then also at 11 p.m every night if it's if it's open it'll close it so I do have some backup things of like, okay, 11 o'clock, if it's open, it's going to close that door, which is nice. Well, and this, Brian says, I've driven two miles down the road. He can't shake that feeling. Like, did I? We're the same way. I, That's why we did the push know. notification. Because every know. time we leave for a vacation, we end up pulling up the camera app and checking if we close the garage door. So now we just know because it'll notify us if, uh, hey, oh, yeah, we did leave it open. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, and I. Uh, I was, I normally, you know, I do the old school sneaker, sneaker net method. The garage is just that way. Like it's just, it's on my way upstairs. I have to pass by the garage door. So my routine at night is I go to the door, open it, <laughs> look, <laughs> oh, it's okay. It's closed. Close the door. I just do that automatically. So I haven't really, it that hasn't been in, especially during pandemic times. I don't, not really going anywhere that much. So that those kinds of things, that camera actually went down for a couple of weeks and I didn't know it because I, I didn't, I just don't use it that much right yeah. now. But now that I'll be driving, I'll be going back into work here in the next couple of weeks on a more regular basis. So be good to have that, uh, be good to have that for just that reason. I love those uh, smart plugs you talked about too. I use those everywhere. I actually set up now in Home Assistant too, and you could do this via a or anything, but uh, Thursday nights, 7.30, these studio lights turn on, my LED strip turns on, the shop light, because I have an overhead light here, turns off because I keep that off while we podcast. So it just, I come down and now the, st the studio is set for podcasting. It actually did it the last two Thursdays is how I was like, oh yeah, I, normally I podcast. I would come down here, I'm like, why are these lights? I'm like, oh, it's it's Thursday at uh, 730 and now the lights are all set. Well, everybody knows I've got that auto tweet that goes out that says, hey, Home Gadget Geeks tonight, re regardless of whether we have one or not. I actually got into IFTTT and shut it off. Like I, I got guilted enough. I think Brian Hour said to me, is this actually going to be real tonight? And I was like, no. So I think that's a good reminder. I should go and, and, uh, and shut that down. So there can be times when that automation bites you, right? Um, I have my studio lights just voice activated because I do different podcasts during the day. And I don't, mm -hmm. you know, I, I guess I could turn them on at 645 or whatever. I don't know. But I just say, hey, lady, you know, turn on my studio lights. 
good enough for me in what I do. The see, the great thing about this is you can customize this to do anything you want. Yeah. Right? You know? Yeah, there was one guy who he used, because Home Assistant now has the ability to use NFC tags. So he has a one place, he has a stand that he puts his phone on. And so he does it for when he comes into work in the morning. So he, in his home office, so he sets his phone in that and all of a sudden his office transforms into like work mode. He even has it where music starts playing, that his like his coding music, the lights turn to their different levels. He has automatic shades. And so the shades open up to let sun in. Um, really cool. That's kind of the, I would love, I, still, I have the old school shades that, you know, aren't on the string. But man, automatic shades would be awesome. We are constantly, we're the type that we're just always adjusting our shades. Uh, we live on a corner lot. And so people can just see into like every one of our windows. So at night we're always adjusting them. Uh, I would love to, those are expensive though, but that would be a really cool next step for the home automation. Um, all right. I think we, I mean, that's a lot of stuff. We just kind of plowed through it. Anything mm -hmm. else, anything else over the break that, uh, you're thinking of that's worth sharing? No, the home assistant stuff is just stuff I've been nerding yeah. out on. And there's just always so much more that you can. Oh, yes. The other thing I was talking about was um, scenes. If you haven't played with scenes in home assistant, really cool. So if you're like me, when I first got into this, like when I, I have a nighttime like, like automation and it turns off lights. I was individually in the automation listing every single light I wanted to turn off. Well, first of all, you can group those. But secondly, you can just create a scene. And the cool part about the scene is go around and set everything like you want it. And then just go to the scene and say, capture the state of all these devices. And so you don't have to go in and say, this device is on, this device is off. Just set your house how you want it or your living room, whatever scene you're making. And then go ahead and just say, hey, go capture these devices. That's the state I want them in when I say, go to this quote scene. So you can have a nighttime scene, a daytime scene, whatever you want. And then the other cool one I will say since I did put one of these on the fireplace, I haven't showed Hannah this yet, so don't tell her. I do have a set the mood automation where the lights in the living room turn off, fireplace turns on, and smooth jazz starts playing out of A-Lady. And it is the funniest thing. I just got it working the other day, and it is, it, it's, it's perfect. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Good. Keep the fire burning. Yeah, right. It's more of a joke. It's never going to work. I mean, um, but... uh. But it's it's still a funny, you know, when the guys go like, "Hey, look at look what I can do," you know, until he later set the mood, and it's a it's more of a, a gag, but it's pretty yeah, good. It's still, you know, you're thinking, you're thinking about. It. I know you sent you sent little flirtatious tweets or or I did. messages to her. So, well, and that yeah. automation is actually through a lady because I still do not have the connection between a lady and home assistant. But a lady can connect to all that same stuff. She can connect to smart switches. She can play her music. She can turn off lights. So uh, that automation is not even through Home Assistant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that Amazon ecosystem is powerful. I mean, they they got a lot of good stuff going. They on do. There. So you can you don't uh, if you if you're thinking, oh man, I don't have the equipment to go into Home Assistant. You can um, you can use and if you've got some, you know, uh, Echo devices, you can do it that way. Um, if you've got older Echo devices, you might want to check on the Amazon website. You can actually trade those in or trade them up for for newer stuff if you want to go that route. This time of the year, I'm always seeing, like I saw um, the the Show 5s for $44, bucks, 44 dollars Dang, that's a good deal. So it's a great way. You know, we use the heck out of ours in the kitchen. I mean, that thing is just, just worn out. In fact, I kind of wish I had a bigger one that was in there. So... Get some opportunities, you know, to purchase some things if you're if you're so inclined and uh, and lots of compatibility. Mike, anything else? No. Couple of reminders uh, for folks on the way out. One, uh, I played them early, but I'll play it again. Big thanks to our Patreon supporters, and uh, we're scrolling on screen. If you're watching the video, we're scrolling on screen. Those of you who are uh, five dollars or more supporters, if you want to, if you want to support us and kind of some of the things that we're doing here. Uh, help buy all this crazy equipment that I buy some of the time, uh, average guy stuff. You can uh, head out to the averageguy.tv slash Patreon and get signed up there. If you sign up for the $5 plan, I have a little uh, a little 3D printed coin that Ron put together for us. And uh, we'll get that mail to you here in the United States. If you want to join us in the Discord group, and man, the home, the home, uh, the smart home group has been doing pretty well. It's not too, one of the things I like, Mike, about our Discord, it's not too chatty. Like, yeah. It's chatty, but it's not too chatty. Like I can, I can walk away from it from a couple days 
and don't feel like I have to come back to the Magna Carta, right? It's just kind of like, yep. like, so if you're looking for a group that's kind of kind and um, not too much, head out to our Discord group, theaverageguy.tv slash Discord. If you want to leave us a message, this is something new that Mike and I have been trying. I'll pimp this for the next couple months, but head out to homegadgetgeeks.com and uh, in the bottom right-hand corner, it's just a little microphone, click it. Record a message for us. Maybe you have a question, a comment, some feedback, whatever. We'd love to hear your voice. HomeGadgetGeeks.com. That's a recent change. And uh, we'd love to have your uh, voicemail messages. You can send me an email, Jim at TheAverageGuy.tv. Follow me on Twitter at Collison at Uyghur Tech for that guy that's over there. And then, of course, we want to remind you, TheAverageGuy.tv, both web and media hosting powered by Maple Grove Partners. Get secure, reliable, high-speed hosting from people that you know and you trust. And, of course, you know that's Christian. MapleGrovePartners.com. He just pinged me the other day and said, hey, we got a new Home Gadget Geeks listener on board. And so I appreciate you guys using Christian for that. Plans start as little as 10 bucks, and he can do just about anything. He's the smartest guy in the world. And uh, he can fix anything, too. He's, he's pretty incredible about that. Um, we had had... Uh, the site was kept going up and down. The average guy.tv kept going up and down. He couldn't figure it out for the longest time. He's been kind of busy too. So I was like, hey, don't worry about it. Just, you know, reboot it. It'll be fine. Then he, he the other day, he's like, ah, I finally found it. He goes, I, we were writing a log file to a spot that wasn't big enough. It was a temporary thing I'd set up a while ago and uh, and just forgot about it. And so we've got you back on the right stuff. So um, we're, we're back and, and awesome. So Christian, thanks for all the work. Uh, that you are doing there. And then, of course, I mean, I'd be remiss if we didn't men- mention HelloFresh. Um, you just, you got, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to say it. You got to try something new. Okay. This is year 2021. If you're not, if you're eating for calories and not for enjoyment, like Mike, every meal now, like we made shepherd's pie last night. Now it's, I think it's, it's not shepherd's pies made with lamb, but we made it with beef. They call it something else, pub, pub pie. I don't know, something like that. And it's a contest now to see who can make the most delicious dinner at our house. You know, I'm cooking, Sarah's cooking, Sammy's helping, like we're doing these kinds of things. And that's all because of HelloFresh. That's all because we've been trying different recipes and they kind of teach you how to do it. So you're kind of bored. Yeah. You're kind of bored with it. Like dinner, if dinner's boring, it's time now, Mike. Little kids, it gets a little challenging with HelloFresh. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was it. Yeah, well, we loved it. And again, it was just the kids' aspect that made it tough because we were still having to make a whole another meal for them. Uh, so yeah, it was like here's well, the way around that. Like order order the two meal two people because there's going to be two nights you're going to feed them fish sticks, or or they're going to get corn dogs, or they're going to get uh, yeah. hot dogs. Right. I mean. Make that for you and feed them hot dogs, <laughs> right? <laughs> right, mac and cheese, right? Pizza, like yeah. Let them, like you know, let them. They, you you can you know throw a frozen pizza in there for them, and then you cook something good for yourself. There you go. And and it's exactly what you need. It's not too much. It's you use it all. It's gone. You don't. You're not. You're not having to buy. Not having to go to the grocery store and buy a whole bunch like. When you buy celery, you're basically buying a whole field of celery these days. Like if you go to the store, you're like, yeah, it's like a bundle of celery. Yeah. And you're like, God, I'm never going to use all this kind of thing. And so they send you exactly what they need. Um, so give it a try. The average guy TV slash hello fresh. We are live every Thursday in Central and Eastern. We'll do a little post show, a little crypto conversation in the post show. We talked about it in the pre show, but. Maybe you didn't join us. Uh, we'll we'll spend a little crypto conversation. We haven't done that in a long time, and crypto prices are ridiculous. Um, by the way, if you head out to theaverageguy.tv slash Patreon, I also post the full show out there for everybody. So if you can't find it on YouTube, it's always on our Patreon page, theaverageguy.tv slash Patreon. We'll spend a little time talking crypto. With that, we'll say goodbye.